Happy Arvo. Hello. So Beck sent in this video. Russell Coit. Another Russell Coit from Working Dog Productions. Which I now know I watch this channel a lot. <laughs> um, it's the most randomly named channel to ever exist. Anyway, teaches you how to drive. How to drive in Australia. Sent in by Beck. She says, another wrestle for you to enjoy. Really hopes the link I've been sending have worked. They have worked. I just can't get to all of them, but I appreciate it. And maybe, I mean, maybe eventually I will, but I'm getting to this one. <laughs> Teaches you how to drive. Let's go. Yep, it's finally happened. We're broken down. The Outback certainly takes its toll on these vehicles. This is a classic survival situation. That's a bad combination. An environment that takes its toll on your vehicle and is a thousand miles to the nearest car repair shop. Situation. Do the wrong thing and you'll probably perish. Do the right thing. <laughs> you'll probably perish. And you'll probably survive. Step one, do You do the right thing and you'll probably survive. Not leave the vehicle. People often make that mistake and they perish within a couple of days. Remember, Jeez. the vehicle is the safest place to What's be. What's going on? Why well, was, was about to run him over? The reality is a four-wheel drive like this one is more than capable of negotiating a track test like this. The problem is city seekers like these people, <laughs> they've got no idea. I take offense because I guarantee I'm a city slicker, according to this guy. They're more interested in getting a bit of dirt on the side of the vehicle. Incredible. Okay, start her up. Okay. Okay, don't touch the brakes, you'll lose control. Yep. Low range, first gear. Right. Watch and listen to me. Okay. Oh, yeah. Yep, it only takes a little know how. Oh, boy. Thanks to good seat belts and a visit from my mates in the Royal Flying Doctor Service, those two tourists were eventually discharged from you intensive know? care. You know, <laughs> people are always coming up to me asking me for advice on driving in the outback. And if I could give you one tip, to be leave your trailer behind. I'd like a dollar for every time I have to rescue someone stuck in the middle of nowhere because of one of these. My tip. I can imagine. Yeah, I'd get stuck with just the car. Just to unhook Let it. Let alone a trailer. And leave it at home. Because remember, trailer spells trouble. It's still going. I. Oh shit. No doubt about it. Russell. The best way to be truly safe in this country. Dang it, Russell. Trouble with yours truly. G'day. What seems to be the problem? I think it's the battery. Hmm. You're not from around here, are you? I'm not, no. Where are you from? Near Manchester. I thought so. Listen, hop back in and we'll uh, see if we can get you started. I was like, what do you mean she's not from around there? That was the thickest Australian accent I ever heard. Battery. Where are you from? Near Manchester. I thought so. Listen, hop back in and we'll uh, see if we can get you started. Lucky for her, help was at hand. I never go out into the outback without a good set of these. Jumper leads. Her battery's as flat as a pommy beer, but I'll have her back on the road before she can say God's sake. Yeah, but you need another car. That doesn't do you any good if you are the one with the dead battery. A basic knowledge of bush mechanics is an absolute must here in the Outback. Am I the only one who gets paranoid every time I hook up cables to jump a car? Thinking I'm going to blow myself up if I do it in the wrong order? Okay, turn her over, doll. Like that. <laughs> Positive to negative. Positive. With that lucky lass back on the road, it was time for me to get moving too. Whenever I'm in the outback, I always take the opportunity to fill up. Because too often people underestimate the distance between towns and get themselves in to trouble. <laughs> And I fill it right up to the top and make sure I get out of here with a full tank. <laughs> that was awkward. Department of Conservation <laughs> up this way don't like people using these alpine tracks. And every so often they try blocking them off. We could have rolled. Seriously? Hold this log to one side. What's happened? As it was our last day together, Jerks. I thought we'd have a little fun so and teach go. those bureaucrats a lesson at the same time. As a formerly licensed explosives expert, I always carry a few formerly. sticks of jelly in the back of the car, and it wouldn't take me long to wire up a charge or two. There's an old Aussie saying, what happens in the bush stays in the bush. 
Now it was just a question of placing the explosives in place and clearing the road. That would be such an awesome Australian experience if some dude in the outback came with a stick of dynamite and blew up something blocking the way. I've just, I've never thought of using explosives to actually accomplish something other than like causing mayhem. <laughs> that would be so cool. Once and for all. Ten, nine, eight, seven, I want to back the car up. Six, five, eight, whoa, hey, run away! <laughs> And as the sun set on another day in the high country, <laughs> it was time... Turns out you could have just gone to the other side and tapped it with your foot, and it would have been out of the way. And for us to bask in the glow of some very special moments. Bog day, fellas? This guy is something else. Yeah. Eh, see if we can't get you out. It never ceases to amaze me. It's the last guy you want trying to get you out. People like this, <laughs> city folk, come out in the <laughs> avenue, back without the right equipment. When I'm four-wheel driving, I always carry one of these. It's called a, a snatch strap. Now that's tightly woven mesh, can hold up to 2,000 kilos or two ton in the old money. Let's see if we can't get these galahs out of here. These what? Or two ton. These in, galahs? In the old money. Let's see if we can't get these galahs out of here. Galahs? Is that what people are going to call me? Galahs? Up here, recovery equipment is not just a necessity, it's a must. I hate to think what would have happened. It's not just a necessity. It's a must. <laughs> Russell Coit is something else. To these two amateurs, if we hadn't come along. You guys say amateurs funny. Amateurs. I just hear someone laugh. Yes. Wow. <laughs> he is a unique brand of humor, Russell Coit. He is a, definitely a he's a treasure of Australia. Protect this guy. Thank you, Beck. And thank you for watching. And go check out Working Dog Productions. You'd never know it, but they have all sorts of great Australian videos. Or maybe you would know it. Maybe that's like the biggest Australian production company. Maybe they're the ones that make Bluey. My son loves Bluey, by the way. Jace. Oh my God, he loves Bluey. Um, I'll see you guys. Next week, I hope. Yeah, yeah. I'll see you next week.